Hello everyone, around this time last year I made one of the toughest decisions in my education journey. I finally dropped out of software engineering and decided to fully commit to a college program specializing in video game programming, where I finally got to work on projects that genuinely interest me, and where I had tons of time to focus on building my portfolio. It's worth noting that some of the projects that I will mention are listed in my github, so you can find the link in the description, along with my each.io page. It's also worth mentioning that I already had some experience with engines like Unity and Unreal because I had taken a few Udemy courses before joining the program, but even then I never really felt comfortable making my own game, but that completely changed when I switched programs. I finally started taking my projects much more seriously because my goal was to build a portfolio strong enough to land me an internship by 2026, and that's basically where everything began. My first series prototype was made in Unreal Engine. I started working on Sugar Mania in November 2024, and after about a month of hard work, I realized this just wasn't the right project for me at the time. I had jumped straight into a huge concept, where basically you play as someone trapped in a creepy candy factory, collecting clues about the factory's owner, which is this weird ugly creature, and you also have to solve puzzles and eventually escape this nightmare. It was basically Willy Wonka mixed with masked horror. Huh? But after a few weeks, the whole thing became overwhelming, the blueprint system I built wasn't really scalable, and the more I tried to add to it, the more everything started falling apart. Eventually, I decided to stop working on it and move on. My my second project, which is also the first complete game that I actually released, was Greg the Glider, which I covered fully on the channel. I started working on it in December 2024, and it took me about 2 months to finish. The whole game was made in Unity, and I even created all the 3D assets myself using Blender and Substance Painter. The game is about Greg, a little pilot on a mission to organize a kid's bedroom. As you clean up the room, every object you interact with reveals a piece of the story about the child who used to live in that bedroom. In this game, your goal is to avoid obstacles and collect batteries to keep Greg's airplane in the air. I was really proud of this project, it gave me a huge confidence boost and honestly pushed me to keep going and make even more games. During the month of February, I ended up working on two different projects. The first one was Yappy Cafe, which I started prototyping in Unreal Engine using both Blueprints and C++, but after about a week, I switched back to Unity, mostly because I felt way too slow in Unreal and I really wanted to finish this project before the end of the month. I will be honest here, working on this project wasn't the most enjoyable experience. I kept being hard on myself for going back to my comfort zone instead of sticking with Unreal. I was doubting myself a lot and I definitely got hit with the Dunning-Kruger effect because right after releasing Greg the Glider, I suddenly felt super confident, but reality checked me pretty quickly and I ended up back to Unity. After finishing Yappy Cafe, I decided it was time to level up my C++ skills. Around that period, I hit the classic I want to build my own minigame engine, something I think a lot of programmers go through once they start feeling a bit more confident. By the end of February, I began working on Silverclad 3D, a very basic 3D renderer. I used Raylib, which comes with its own 3D functions, and I also integrated a pre-made PBR shader from the Raylib GitHub. By the way, my main goal with this project was to dive deeper into game architecture and build my own entity component system. By that time, I also started reading game programming patterns, and overall this project took me 3 months of inconsistent work. In March, I decided to return to Unreal Engine. By this point, my relationship with Unreal Engine was a classic love-hate story. I wanted to feel comfortable with it, but it kept making it hard. During that time, I focused on creating a simple shooter prototype. I drew a lot of inspiration from Rambo 6 Siege movement, especially its leaning mechanic, and added my own mechanics like sliding and jumping. And on top of that, I modeled and animated the hands myself, and I coded everything in C++. After 2 weeks, I had a first person controller, but my heart was yearning for a new challenge. So by the end of March, I found this small game jam with an interesting theme, and I wanted to participate in my very first game jam. This time, I went with Unity and I had a lot of fun gathering references, fine tuning the game mechanics, and even even implementing a pedaling animation using an IK rig in Blender, which ended up being reversed. So basically the concept is about this Italian chef named Antonio, who is on a mission to deliver a pizza on a unicycle to a very important client, and I ended up in 5th position in this jam. During April, I was mostly focused on school projects, but I was also kind of obsessed with IK rigging at the time, so when my prototyping teacher suggested we make a game, my mind immediately went to a mechanical spider. The game I ended up creating was a mini bullet hell, roguelike 
Age experience where you play as a mechanical spider defending Mars from waves of human colonizers. After each round, the player gets to choose between cars that can be used to upgrade their abilities. I will admit it here. This project was a bit of a last minute rush and I could have definitely polished it more, but even so, I'm still proud of what I managed to pull together. In May, I decided to give Unreal Engine another shot. This time, instead of creating an FPS controller, I went with a top-down character controller. The character can move, run, and even crouch. This prototype took me two weeks to finish and as always, I modeled the character myself in Blender and I coded everything in C++ except for the animations being controlled by blueprints. By the beginning of June, I wanted to tackle a full game again, something like Greg the Glider but with a different mechanic. This time, I wanted to make a rage game where you play as a rat riding a coffee mug. The project took me about a month and then I slowly started losing motivation. I won't lie here, this project had a ton of potential and I could have turned it into something really great. But just like before, my goal wasn't to publish games on Steam. It was to build solid projects for my portfolio. So after a month of drawing inspiration from all your crazy and amazing ideas in the comments, I decided it was time to move on to the next challenge. By the end of July, I decided to join the GMTK25 game jam. With only 4 days to make a game under the theme loop, I ended up creating a narrative driven experience where you play as a young girl visiting her aging mother in a surreal hospital. With each visit, the mother drifts back into her memories, the game was meant to be a touching story about the loop of life and it's also worth noting that I managed to submit this game 4 seconds before the deadline and I also ended up ranking in top 160 in narrative. Just a few days after the GMTK game jam, I jumped into another one, I really loved the concept of this game jam so I didn't waste any time and I came up with a game idea. You play as little Claire, working in a tying workshop and her job is to fix items that friendly squirrels bring to her. In my opinion, the script for this game is one of the best I've ever written. Part of that was thanks to finally being able to implement clean programming patterns that saved me a lot of time. For your interest, I made the game in less than 6 days and it ended up ranking 13th. During my journey in this program, I took an advanced programming class where we got to work with the Visual Studio Profiler. One of the most interesting projects in this course was optimizing a fluid simulation that initially supported only 350 particles. After profiling the code, I was able to add an extra 2000 particles by implementing a depth broad grid system. Essentially, this system only checks each particle for collisions with other particles in the same cell, which made the simulation run much smoother. In September, I participated in my fourth game jam, hosted by some local universities and Ubisoft Montreal. This one quickly became my favorite. First of all, it was an in-person event and even though I barely slept during the 46 hours, it was an amazing opportunity to meet other developers. For this jam, I worked closely with six other team members, four from my game programming program and two artists. Together we built a strategy game where players must protect their base from an angler fish while expanding their territory. And to top it all off, our team won the first prize. After winning that game jam, I wanted to shift my focus back to school projects. One of the main ones I worked on was an RTS style navigation system where you can select workers and assign them to collect resources. The idea was simple. There are three resource piles scattered around the map, each containing 30 resources. Using a nav mesh, the agents navigate to a pile, collect resources, and bring them back to a drop zone. Once a pile is empty, they automatically move on to the next one. All of this was implemented with the help of a finite state machine which was coded from scratch using an interface. Another project I worked on in October was an endless runner game in Unreal Engine. I had actually started this project almost 3 years ago. This year I wanted to finally include it in my portfolio, so I went back to it and reworked the entire road spawning system and balanced the car's speed. The game still doesn't have sound yet, but I'm really happy with the improvements and I ended up adding it to my portfolio anyway. Another school project I really enjoyed working on was an AI tool. The idea was to create a patrol system that an AI character could use to navigate a scene. We also had to make use of Unity's tools like the terrain tool and pro builder to build the environment ourselves. On top of all of that, we had to code a full behavior tree from scratch to handle the different types of NPCs. And finally, to wrap everything up, the most recent project I worked on as of mid-November was a Boyd simulation for my game AI course. In this project, we had to program a full flocking system featuring two types of birds, eagles and doves. Each bird had its own behaviors. The doves flocked together peacefully, while the eagles behaved more like predators. Based on the theory we learned in class, I implemented different behaviors like cohesion, alignment, and separation. A great example of this kind of behavior in an actual game is Absu. Abza. Bro, what are you talking about, man? where you can see groups of fish moving seamlessly together. So yeah, as you can see, this was a pretty busy year. Some of these projects are actually covered here on the channel, so I highly encourage you to check them out if you want to see more of the behind the scenes work. This has honestly been one of my proudest years so far, and this is only the beginning. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.